Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Old Sarge Collects. My name is Dan, and this is episode 24 of the Diamond Star set. In the previous episode, going in numerical order, uh, at card number 88, we covered George Selkirk. Card number 89, Joe Strip. Card number 90, Ray Hayworth. And card number 91, Bucky Harris. So I've got one Hall of Famer to share with you today. But we're going to start off with uh, a non-Hall of Famer, and that is... Ethan Allen. So let's talk about Ethan Allen a little bit here. Um, he was born in 1904 in Cincinnati, Ohio. He made his major league debut in 1926 as a center fielder for the Cincinnati Reds. Ethan Allen played in the majors for 12 years and had a lifetime batting average of 300. He played for the Reds, the New York Giants, the St. Louis Cardinals, the uh, Phillies, Chicago Cubs, and St. Louis Browns. Allen later became the baseball coach at Yale University, where he served until 1968. He reached the College World Series twice and coached future president George H.W. Bush. And if you're not familiar, uh, George, President George H.W. Bush has a very scarce card in the 1990 top set where he is wearing that Yale uniform. Allen, uh, Ethan Allen died in 1993 at the age of 89. Let's go ahead and take a look at the card. So the back of the card is a blue back from 1936, and it gives the 35 uh, statistics. And the back of the card says that despite having several years of being disabled through illness, Allen is considered one of the most dangerous hitters in the National League. It describes him as being a line, drive, a line driver more than a slugger. And the front of the card... Uh, the front of the card shows him in his Phillies uniform, and in the background you can see power lines and an Art Deco design building. So, pretty neat image. All right, let's talk about the next player, and that is card number 93, Alvin Crowder. So, Alvin Crowder was nicknamed the General. And he was born in 1899 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. He made his Major League debu debut as a pitcher in 1926 for the Washington Senators. Uh, Crowder earned his nickname for serving three years in the Army during World War I. So, um, Alvin, thank you for your service. Although he never reached the rank of general, that's what his teammates ended up calling him. He learned to play baseball in the Army. And after his service, he played in the Pacific Coast League. Crowder played in the majors for 10 seasons. He averaged 20, win, 20 wins per year for most of the time in the majors. He was also known as the Yankee Killer for his success against the Yankees and, in particular, against Babe Ruth. The four teams he pitched for were the Washington Senators, the St. Louis Browns, the Senators for a second time, and the Detroit Tigers. In 1932, Crowder set a record, which still holds uh, for the most innings pitched in a season without hitting a batter, and that's 327 innings. Crowder was a two-time wins leader and an All-Star in 1933, which was the first All-Star game uh, in its inaugural year. He was a World Series champion in 1935. He had a win-loss record of 167 to 115 and an ERA of 4 uh, 412 with 799 strikeouts. Alvin Crowder died in 1972 at the age of 73. So let's take a look at this card. Um, now it is a SGC one and a half, but take a look at the card itself on the front. It's got sharp corners. Um, it's got a good surface. If you flip it over to the back, I want to explain to you why I got a, a one and a half. You might be able to see it, but there is some glue residue right here. And that's the reason why it got that one and a half. Anyway, the back is a blue back, um, which has 1935 statistics. And on the back, it talks about him pitching in the last three World Series with Washington and the last two with Detroit. And it says in 1933, he tied Lefty Grove with the most wins for the season. Now, on the front, um, this is Alvin's last card, by the way. 
just before he left the major leagues, and it shows him in his Detroit Tigers uniform in the follow-through pitch. And then you've got some different colors in the background, and I believe you've got uh, pillars in, uh, for the grandstands back there. So that is Alvin Crowder, card number 93. The next player is Wes Farrell, and this is card number 94. And let's learn about Wes. Uh, now, Wes has a brother that uh, is a Hall of Famer, and I'll talk a little bit about him. But he was Wes Farrell was born in 1908 in Greensboro, North Carolina. Wes has a brother, Rick Farrell, who is also a Hall of Famer catcher. Um, Wes made his major league debut in 1927 as a pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. Farrell played in the majors from 1927 to 1941. He pitched for the Indians, the Red Sox, the Senators, Yankees, Dodgers, and Boston Braves. Wes had a fiery temper and oftentimes would lash out at the umpire, his coach, and he would even harm himself. He pitched a no-hitter in 1931 and was voted to the 1933 All-Star team. Once he was traded to the Red Sox, his brother and teammate uh, Rick knew how to calm him down. He played with Rick for most of his career after that. Wes became a star pitcher in 1934 with the Red Sox. He was also an exceptional hitter, often called upon to be a pinch hitter. In 1935, he finished second place in MVP voting behind Hank Greenberg. Also in the same year, he was the American League wins leader. Wes and his brother Rick were traded to the Senators in 1937, and both of them were voted to the All-Star team game that year. He had a personal uh, a personality conflict with the Senators' owner, so he was traded to the Yankees. And during the winter, he underwent arm surgery and never fully recovered. He spent the next few years of his Major League career being traded to the Dodgers, Boston Braves, and then finally to the minor leagues. Wes was voted into the Boston Red Sox Hall of Fame, and many believe he should also be inducted into the Major League Hall of Fame. Wes Farrell died in 1976, at the age of 68. Let's take a look at this card. So on the back of this card, it's a blue back, 35, uh, 1935 statistics. And the back of the card talks about Wes's no-hit game in 1931. And it also talks about he and his brother in the All-Star game in 1933. It also says that Wes is one of the leading sluggers and pinch hitters of the game, which is pretty cool considering he's a pitcher. Kind of like an early day Shohei Otani. Uh, the front of this card shows Wes in his Boston Red Sox uniform with a multicolored background. Okay, and the last card that I'm going to share with you today is of Hall of Famer Luke Appling. So let's learn a little bit about Luke Appling. Uh, card number 95, Luke Appling. He was born in 1907. In High Point, North Carolina, he made his Major League debut as a shortstop for the Chicago White Sox. Appling played his entire 20-year career with the White Sox and is considered one of the best shortstops the game has ever seen. He was a seven-time All-Star and holds two batting titles. He was the first shortstop to win a batting title in 1936 with a batting average of .388, and that's the highest batting average recorded by a shortstop in the 20th century. His overall batting average is a 310, and he compiled 2,749 hits. He did all this and lost two years to military service during World War II. He served in the Army, so Luke, thank you for your service. He retired as a player in 1950 and later went on to coaching in the minors and eventually in the majors. The Chicago White Sox retired number four, which was his jersey number, and he was voted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1964. Luke, Luke Appling died at the age of 83 in 1991. Let's take a look at the back of the card. So this, again, is a uh, 1936 card, uh, but it gives the, the statistics for 1935. It's a blue back, and the back of the card talks about Luke hitting over 300 for the past three years. It talks about him being a high average hitter. The front of the card, 
which I especially like, and I believe is probably my favorite card out of this grouping, um, shows shows Luke in his White Sox uniform practicing his swing. And in the background, it shows what looks like another player holding a bat who's standing next to a player throwing a ball. So I really like the background detail of this card. You know, you can kind of see a batting practice going on here. The White Sox warming up, you know, to go up against another team. So that's what I really like about that card. And this concludes the video for today. I hope you enjoyed this lineup. And uh, until next time, keep hunting the good stuff. Take care.